When we hear the name St. Patrick, we might think of a happy-go-lucky Irishman wandering the fields and picking up four-leaf clovers. That could not be further from the truth. The story of St. Patrick is remarkable and nearly impossible to imagine. A young man living in the fourth century is kidnapped from his Britain homeland and forced into slavery in the southern region of Ireland. For six years, he lives in near isolation, working as a shepherd. During this time, Patrick has an encounter with God, and over time, God tells Patrick to leave his sheep and a ship would be waiting for him. Patrick returns home to Britain, only to sense God calling him back to the pagan land of Ireland to preach the gospel and to spell the Druids which held the land in fear. Writing the score to the trials of St. Patrick was a complex endeavor. This wasn't going to be a happy-go-lucky Irish tune. The sound of the score would need to be able to turn quickly from something intimate and folk-like to an almost apocalyptic orchestral score as Patrick destroys the gods that held Ireland in fear. I spent a lot of time meditating on what needed to be accomplished with Patrick's theme. I wanted a theme that was clearly Irish, playable on ancient woodwinds or sung by a vocalist, yet also could live in the orchestra with full accompaniment. After reading the script and before writing a note of music, I was drawn to a passage in the Bible that I felt summarized Patrick's character. The verse was Joshua 1.9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. After finding this Bible verse, I woke up one night with Patrick's theme in my head. This was the first time that's ever happened to me in all my years of writing music. I got out of bed and wrote the theme out on paper. Even at that late hour of the night, I was struck by all the detailed ornamentation I heard, and I knew that was so important to the theme. A few days later, I flushed out that theme from that scribbled piece of paper and submitted that to the producer and director. That two-minute piece embodied so much of what we would draw from in the score, so much of the story was told in those two minutes. The biggest piece of the puzzle for this score would be finding an ancient woodwind player with extensive knowledge of early Celtic music. I came across recording artist Jessica Baran Sorel, and through a website, I realized that Jessica lived in Hamburg, Germany, and had roots from Brittany, which is the Celtic region of France. I became even more convinced that this was the person for the score. We connected over Skype and began to dialogue about how she might fit into the score. Jessica's featured both playing alto and soprano recorders, but it's her tabor pipe and gems horn that are the real standouts in this score. The night before I delivered all the music to Jessica, I felt a deep sense that I was missing an important secondary theme. I wrote a melody which I simply called the Shepherd Song. I wanted a pure and soothing sound, so Jessica played the Shepherd Song on her gems horn. That melody turned out to be the biggest surprise for the entire score. Her performance was gorgeous. So on a whim, I threw it against the scene where Patrick comes to faith and is reading Psalm 23. It was breathtaking. And it was at that moment that I understood the theme's purpose. It was a song of redemption, not just of Patrick's redemption, but the theme of the redemption of Ireland against the pagan gods of the land. Sarah and I had just finished working on the Brother Francis score together, and I knew I wanted her to be a part of this score as well. Her voice is the pure embodiment of beauty. There is nothing like it out there. The caveat for Sarah was that she needed to sing in Gaelic. Now, Sarah has sung many languages for me over the years, but never a language that's largely unspoken. Sarah was able to locate Moira O'Brien, an Irish vocalist living in Chicago who knew the Gaelic language and could act as our translator and vocal coach. Through her contacts in Ireland, she was able to translate Joshua 1.9 not only into Gaelic, but into the dialect of the southern region where Patrick was enslaved. What Sarah would eventually sing is as close as we could get to what Patrick might have heard during that time. On a hunch, I asked Sarah to sing the Shepherd song in two dynamic levels. One soft, like the whisper of God, and the other, more like someone singing about their freedom. I deeply believe that the shepherd's theme, with her voice, was going to be the final song of freedom when Patrick destroys Crom Cruach. 
Crum Cruach was a god of pre-Christian Ireland and was worshipped by the Druids. The people of Ireland offered their firstborn children as a sacrifice in exchange for milk and grain until Patrick destroyed this statue and cast the demon that inhabited it to hell. To the people of Ireland, it was god of the harvest and of fertility. It was referred to as the Bent One and at times represented as a serpent. The idol resided on the plain of Moishlucht and was made of gold, silver, and bronze surrounded by 12 stone figures. When it came time to write this episode, I must admit I was intimidated. I knew this was the episode for which I needed to deliver big time. And even though I had written some pretty solid music through the first six episodes, I was filled with so much self-doubt and asked many close friends to pray fervently for me over the next 10 days. I wouldn't say it all came easily, and at times I felt like Jacob himself wrestling the angel, but I wouldn't let go until I found what I was looking for. Episode 7 is Patrick's journey across the desolate plains of Moishlucht, which is littered with human remains and smells of rotting flesh. The episode climaxes with a confrontation and destruction of this god. The scene of Krom Kruak's destruction alone was an eight-minute sequence and unquestionably the most difficult piece of music I've ever written to date. Patrick described Krom Kruak as a consumer of souls, and those words became a building block for me in the score. Much of the music surrounding this demon features notes stacking on notes into various dissonant clusters, as if notes are being consumed by this entity. I wanted to be able to use this concept quietly with string harmonics or a massive brass cluster. In the last cue leading up to Patrick's arrival to the statue, I play the percussion with the Morse code rhythm that spells the word devour. Patrick's confrontation with the demon required me to write over an eight-minute cue. The final four minutes of this scene is the demon's exorcism, and it moves through many waves of power as Patrick calls on the name of Jesus to remove this being. It's these final four minutes of music that I'm so proud of. With each wave of the exorcism, we move through a sort of musical battle. We hear the apocalyptic music that was featured in an earlier battle with a druid priestess. We transition to Patrick's theme in full power, with all the rhythms cut in half. Playing Patrick's theme at halftime allowed me to write some obvious counterlines to the theme, almost as if it's God empowering Patrick. Patrick is made great only through God's greatness. It cuts back to the darkness as the choirs chant and the timpani pound. I wanted our listeners to feel as if they're right there with Patrick, as if they could see the turmoil and tension that's ensuing as Ireland is being dispelled of this entity, as if they could see the sweat on Patrick's brow. I could feel the prayers of so many people during those days, and I found material and orchestrations coming out of me that I had never considered prior and I've been writing music a long time. With each wave of the exorcism, I locked into the truths that Patrick was claiming and found the melodies and harmony that it dictated. At times, I didn't even feel like I was writing music. I felt like a conduit. There's an obvious turn in the score, and it feels like a sort of breakthrough. It's the type of change where you know victory is imminent, and it's only a matter of time. It's at this moment that I bring back a theme I call the Power of God theme and orchestrate it to its full potential. When the statue finally topples over and Patrick proclaims his final prayer, which has become known as St. Patrick's Breastplate, I play Sarah's triumphant version of the Shepherd's Song over the dialogue and was overcome with emotion. There it was, the moment I felt in my gut could happen. The redemption of the land with Sarah's powerful voice leading the way. I concluded that scene and slept for days. I was completely exhausted. It was as if something within me was freely given over to our creator through that scene, and I would be forever tied to Patrick's story.
Words cannot express the deep gratitude I feel towards Dave Arnold and Paul McCusker for entrusting this story to me. I've always said that Dave brings out the very best in me. And I'm even more thrilled to say that Paul's scripts inspire something deep within my soul to reach for the very best I have to offer. And I hope that in this process, it's God's name that is made great.